use this mic? You can? Amen. I'm really honoured, I tell you. I beg, no. Seriously, I'm honoured even to hear, wow, just being a friend, a brother together all these years. Uh, before City Mission Church started, it was Prudential Christian Fellowship, those of you who know the history, yeah? And Elder Wee was ordained, haven't established CMC 26, 27 years back. Under my founding pastor, uh, he was ordained in our church, in our premises, and we covered them for a while until, until uh, CMC was registered and started. But I tell you, even knowing Elder Wee from a bit distance, those back, I think he was in the mid-40s, but that vibrancy, fire for God, that winning souls for God has been there. Amazing. That has been amazing. He was ordained with uh, Elder Ben Kim, right? Yeah, two of them. And then, of course, I know Elder Jehu, Elder Thomas, joy and a blessing to just journey together. Yes, I have retired uh, two, three years back. And of course, all my friends say retired. I'm really enjoying this phase the last three years. I'm pastoring a church. Okay, uh, a bit of history because some of them... I, get, I walk into the church. I came to know the Lord in Glad Tidings Church when I was 17 years old. 17 is a magical number. David in the Bible, they believe he, that time when God called him, was around that age. I'm talking to the young people. Those of you who are already 27, 37, never mind. But when God called you. Both my grandmothers are believers in Christ, Presbyterian from China. Then they came to Singapore. And my parents, nominal Christian. We don't have idols in the house and so on because our generation is... Uh, how many of you know Pastor Pang Ekwan? Wow. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I just announced that he's former senior pastor of Better Assembly of God for quite a number of years. After the sea words, then Pastor Pang. Why I mentioned Pastor Pang is my uncle. Uh, Pastor Pang's wife is my mother's sister. So he's my satyo. In his generation, he became the pastor. And as a school principal from Serangoon Secondary School, he brought so many of the students to Christ in Better Assembly in Palm Grove Avenue those times. He was featured in Salt and Light. And he's 89. He had a major stroke. So I've been closely informed. The wigs and so on are not arranged yet. They're asking that generation, from generation to generation, even my grandmother who last night I mentioned died at 84 years old. One thing... Jesus is coming back again. That is the message from my grandmother. I remember it's just etched into our mind. Jesus is coming back. I know she is gone to heaven already, but that voice is still, Jesus is coming back. We have to keep our focus and remind ourselves and not one another, and Jesus is coming back again. It's serious. That is a culmination of everything from the day in the beginning when God created heaven and earth until... Jesus is coming back again. A glorious church without spot, without wrinkle, without blemishes. No more tears, brothers and sisters. No more sorrow. Everything will be lifted and we are going to be with Him. Glorious church. Today we look at one another. Pardon me, even look at myself in the mirror. Get blemishes. But that process has to continue to work in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. The work of the Holy Spirit must continue to do deep work within my heart to be transformed, change, to be more like Christ. How many of you are with me on that? That sincerely and seriously we desire, I need it, you need it. I only saw five. For the overwhelming response. But seriously, how many of us, I know, Lord. Yeah, we are being changed, we are getting better. Morning, church. Are you refreshed after last night's sleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is refresh. Reset. Thank you, Elder Jehu, for defining that for us. Reset, refresh, restart. And this is what CMC is looking for. After all the years you have gone through, 20 over years, last year, huh? one, two years, this last one, two years pandemic, and all put in together quite a bit. Friend as a brother. I have been watching or saying to this church. Thank God after I retired three years ago, when I was a full-time pastor, seven years 
my own one and only church, my wife. Eh? And I, by, by the way, this is Amy, my wife. Eh? <laughs> Take out your mask, please. Show your face. <laughs> oh, this side want to see you. Oh. Come, 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 come. Say hello, say hello. <laughs> because some of you haven't met. And then now this morning, oh, this is your wife, this is your husband. Oh, Pastor Lawrence. <laughs> uh, 47 years in that church. My first and only church at age. I came in, a rookie. But that first Sunday, I entered into that little wooden hut with my older brother. We didn't know anybody in the church. I can still remember the two ushers who greeted us. We were there early. We didn't know what time service was. So we roughly see got people there. 9.45, we were there. 10.30, the service. It lasted until about 1 p.m. Standard. 1, 1, 20. <laughs> Long service. From there, they took us to the corner. There, at the corner of Jalan Lorong Lengkam. Ate lunch, bring us back to church, talk to the two of us, my brother and myself. I stayed until 4.30 p.m. And then I forgot that I had appointment with my girlfriend. And a few friends, we go out together, five, six of us, to KT Silima. And they... <laughs> handphone, ma? Good, good thing no handphone then. <laughs> Finally, when they went for the show, I, was, I still didn't turn up. I went to church. Morning until 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I went to church. 47 years, just... But glorious, grace God, grace God. So by January, I will be a half-centurion. Half-centurion is those who have been a Christian for 50 years next year. January coming, 50 years in Christ, and God is still working. God is still changing. I am still learning. Joseph, last night, we heard 17 years old, a bit, you know, with his beautiful coat, colorful, precious coat, and he went through and through and through. I said 17, and he went through, I look it up, about 22 years before, uh, before he went into the palace of Pharaoh. So 22 plus 17 is 39, right? Almost 40 years old. Last night I mentioned 30 is wrong. It's about 40, 22 years of process. Up and down. Reset, refresh. Restart, refresh, reset. Look at that for yourself. A true life story in the Bible. Look at it for yourself. Mike, when God wants to press the reset button, are we willing? Are we ready? Amen? And He does that. He loves he chastens. Parents, you know that as much as you love your children, there are times you need to be hard. But don't be too hard. Lah, huh? I tell you why. Eileen, if you ever, four boys, I can imagine. Huh? Long one. Long one, short one, big one, thin one. Oh, huh? Zap. Whom he loved, he chastened. It is painful. And I tell you, it is even more painful for the father or mother the harder you whack, because it is serious. They have to get now. Learn it. Don't ever do this again. This is serious. And without those little chastening, we will go away. We, how painful it is. Sometimes here we... Mm, there we... <laughs> have an parents. You know that feeling? But whom he loved, he chastened. God now with a joy. When you go into diverse temptation, testing, trial, tribulation, testing, testing, every time we test the mic, ah. testing, testing, trial, tribulation, <laughs> all of us go through, regardless. And if God has big plans for you, He has to have a big man with a solid inner man here. Yeah? How many of you want to be that great man and woman for God now? Seriously, yeah, we wanna, but ready to go through. It is only in the heat, the intense heat, that all these, the bad things are going to be washed away, cleansed away, the drawers are going to be cleansed away. Ah, city mission, 2022 have gone by, pandemic after two years, two and a half years. 2023, where are you headed? I don't have the answers. I'm not trying to tell you I have the answers, no. But seriously, come together, seek the Lord. Psalms 133. 
unity is important, brothers. And at times when things come in, there'll be arrows, there'll be fingers pointing. Need to reflect, get together. The fathers of the house, the mothers of the house. I wish the other elders are here. There are a few more elders I remember. Perhaps they really have commitment there. No? But you need to get that. We are very human. Abraham did that, right? No child. God promised him no child. He waited, waited, waited. And he fathered Isaac at what age? At what age? At what age? 100 years old. His wife, 99. Humanly shut down. Totally shut down. 100 years old. But when God promises, this man cling on, he holds on. He knows. My God. Don't rush ahead of God, please. But don't be too slow. But when God speaks, we have to. Not easy. I've run a church all these years. Came to glad tidings. I serve in everything. I was so excited for God, I tell you. My, my national service days. Oh, Yo Chu Kang, Silita. I check out, I take my dinner, I take two, three buses to go back to church for prayer meeting. Distance of God, I see. There is something in this place. I'm coming back next Sunday and next Sunday and next Sunday. Seriously, without fail. Unless I'm sick or traveling, I'm dead every Sunday. 33 years old, I was ordained. The first batch of elders, four of us, I was the youngest. The next one, about one year older than me, the next few. Four, uh, I was 33 years old. I was ordained an elder in the church. Day elder. Signed from my work at 39. That is a, you know, a good time, uh, 39 to the 40s and so on. Even when I was about 20 years old, 17, 18 years old, uh, two houses, this old guy in the center, the car park, badminton court. One Saturday evening after youth meeting, I was just <laughs> last night like, wandering, standing there, <laughs> looking around, almost 7 p.m., almost sunset. Just like that, in a moment. I did not tell anybody until I was married and much later. Are you okay or not? You know what I mean? And those days, you don't say, God spoke to me. Huh? We, those days, you, we were not into all this yet. Yeah? Those days, some years later, Peter and Christine, first time in our church, very prophetic from Perth, Australia. I was sitting in front. I always want to take the front seat, ready to listen. And the first person he pointed out, stand up, please, young man. And type out. We type out. Serious matters. And then he went around to prophesy, prophesy and give words to different people. And God was speaking. 20 years, like that, lah, journey. Lah. Still working, having a good deals and marketing, and God bless, I tell you. In those years of recession, I felt so bad because I'm in charge of sales and marketing and business. Work. But it was better every year still. So, so. The favor of the Lord, people. Real story. This one, you know, flesh and blood one, you know. Huh? We heard from Joseph last night from the Word of God. It's real, real story. 4,000 years back. Today, real story. 1970, 1890. Real story. My brother and myself started out to do some aircon business. Run now, hand it to the sun. He reminded me how we walk. You can stand up here and tell your story too. I'm telling you, not just me. But I want to in our God. Pastor Kim Pao, Amen. This is our God. Yeah? This is our God. And every vessel he wants, he more. If it's not good, he throw it back. More. I'm going to do a devotion with all of you, but I feel it's so important. Times, yeah, it was tough. There were difficult moments everywhere. There's a generation, they are generous who are going to come up from here. Hold their hands, nurture them. We need one another. Passing of the baton. Not generous, generous. Okay? Because of a culture in this place. There is a DNA in this place. Nurture it. it is experience of the old, but we need the enthusiasm of the young. Is that okay? Amen. But the enthusiasm of the young cannot just run ahead because the old have to, Oi, this is not, you know. And we need the left hand and the right hand to be strong. Amen? We need our left leg and right leg. Can you walk with one leg? Can. I can hold for few seconds, uh, how, yeah? Is that okay? Hey, you're very serious. <laughs> See, that right. But good. I'm just speaking to you from my heart. I haven't got time to talk to you. I just want to talk to you from my heart. Now, for now, got the message? Yeah. Where we are, what we need to do, and God 
is in the heart. This is God's house and these are God's people and we are talking God's word. It has reached our heart deep down. From here, it has to drop here. Really, I tell you that. And going ahead, we do not know what 2023, I don't pretend to be a prophet. I'm not for profit one. Huh? Uh, you didn't get that, it's okay. See me after the class. Actually, this camp, you're a bit shortchanged. You were supposed to get Reverend Dato Daniel Ho, D-U-M-C. Wow. When I heard Reverend Dr. Daniel Ho, I also want to come. Then they say, you be second speaker, Ken. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Ho, talk, take five sessions, I take one, Ken. I wanted to come. I, I met him through, through the session. Yeah, but then somehow, I think he's fully booked. <laughs> thank God I'm here. <laughs> but thank God for the grace also for having me. I want to do a devotion with you this morning from Psalms 80 devotion for one purpose, passion for, for God. Can you stand up with your Bible open, Psalms 84? We'll just read four verses. They're all together, 12 verses, not very long, and I'll try to cover as much as we can from the 12 verses. But we're going to read together. Read aloud. Read taking in the words. Read believing what God is saying to us this morning. If you are ready, Psalms 84, different version, let's read together. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faint for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Amen. Father, we just pray. We bow before you. We know that there are sacred moments. Today, keep our mind alert, our spirit afresh. To listen to you. Your word is a bread of life. Let your word be deposited deep into us. Prepare our hearts right now. That we will not be distracted. Prepare our heart as a good soil to receive your word that you bring forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Every heart. Every one of us, young and old. Let there be hunger within our heart that we say that we thirst and long after you. Teach us to get into your word. Teach us to hear by the Holy Spirit, your living word, and by the Holy Spirit from your written word. In Amen. Amen. Behold how lovely. Behold how amiable. Behold how precious. How lovely is your dwelling place. The psalmist love God's house so much. And every one of you are here in the church camp. Of course, some of us just ah, yeah, take a few days holiday. Like, it's nice also. Like, huh? Everything organized for us is quite nice. But let us come like the heart of the psalmist. The psalmist longs for God's house. He say, how lovely, how I long to be near the courts of God. How beautiful is this place. The desire is so deep. He said, my heart, my soul longs, my heart yearns, my flesh cries. Very emo, very deep things. Heart yearns, my soul longs, my flesh cries for the living God. Not a person is lovesick. Huh? Sorry, huh? I can't stand huh? when, when they are soccer either or they are those boy band or whatever come and all this... <laughs> I can't stand that kind of thing. Wake up, man. Be real, man. <laughs> hey, yo. Oh, I can't stand these kind of things. But there is a real thing here. The Psalmist, this is the word of God and these are God's people. The Psalmist, the Levites, these are written by the son of Korah. My heart yearns, my holy love sick, if I may. Is that okay? A holy love sick for God. Psalmist is so consumed with this intense desire to national service long, long, long time ago when I was doing the Telopaku camp at that time. And I have a few friends who came back from US to do their. They told me, 
when you are studying by Saturday afternoon or so, you will drive across state. You drive, drive, drive. 10 hours across state, like Singapore to Penang kind of distance. You drive, drive, drive. There, sometimes Saturday morning or something, just to spend about 10, 12, hour, 10, 11 hours drive. See, when you are in love, you can fly to the moon. Huh? Hello, your husband drive 10 hours for you or not? Quick lah, quick lah. That kind of thing, yeah? That is passion. He was in love. My friend, Theo. And he read this. This came back to me. The psalmist, his heart yearns, his soul longs. My flesh cries for the living God. He loved God so much, he wants to be in the house of God. But I know reading through that whole 12 verses, he didn't describe what is this thing. What is this thing that you... I know it's a house of God, but what is this thing? Hi. Pandemic. How many of you have seen this? this went indescribable. So he didn't tell us what was it in the house. It is indescribable. And then the second and third verse, the Sami says, he talked about what? Even the sparrow and the swallow. Two birds he described here. He mentioned here. The sparrow has found a home. The swallow has found a nest for herself to lay their egg. I tell you why. As a Levite, Three times a year, the children of Israel come for the great feast, right? The three feasts in a year. And they travel, sometimes for a day. Yeah? The tabernacle, outer court, is open. It's just a court uh, with like ten a fence, huh? like cloth. Huh? Then after you go into the holy place and the most holy place. So understand this. People of Israel come only to the outer court, offer their sacrifices. Who can get in on duty? Nobody, suka suka get inside, huh? Once a year, on the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement, when God allowed only the high priest alone. And the high priest had to go through a ceremonial cleansing, then he can enter on that day. One day, and then he comes out. It was so serious that if anything was not right, he represented the people, he bring everything and come before God. If anything was not right, if sin or blemishes, you'll be stricken down. And Ananias suffering happened. It's real. That's why they have to tie a rope to his leg with the bell and the pomegranate. If they hear plum and then no more sound, nobody can enter any more. serious as that to enter into the presence of God. Today, let's not take it lightly. Is that okay? We are not under the law, but we don't take God very lightly. Okay? He's a good God. As much as he loves us, we love him, but let's be clear about certain things. There are certain lines. Everybody, you tell me, Pastor, everybody doing it. I don't care about everybody, I care about you. Christians, sad to say. They can tell me, Pastor, you don't know, nowadays, young people, we all out there. Sorry. Okay, brothers and sisters. Hello. Back to CMC, you know. But I'll tell you what I think. Marriage and so on, I say, I want to have the right to tell you what I think. If I don't have that, I will not spend time with you. What's the point? I can be a nice person. I have to be. Correct? Amen? I have to tell you what is right in from the Word of God. Not if some of it is what I think. Like some things are not just all Bible in that sense. Bible principle, but I want to tell you what I think from God's Word. I have. If no, you don't give me that right, we can yam, yam cha, yam cha, go home. Huh? I'm not going to spend too much time. Serious. But if we are serious, let's be serious. Some people in there, wow, the parrot, la, beautiful one. Ah. Until now, I haven't found one person who keep in a cage a swallow, a sparrow. Here is more sparrow, very beautiful. Doesn't make good. They don't whistle. Simple bird. But why did he mention the sparrow and the swallow? Because as a Levite, he must have seen one day these birds just fly in Habernacle, but then there was a temple. He just fly and make a nest there. You know? Serious, serious, real stuff. Interesting. Amen. God's word. Amen. But then here the psalmist envy that these birds can just fly. And that is his hand. Sorry, lay, lay their young at your altar. So, and every Sunday as we go to house of God. Or at moments, I want to mention this to you. Don't just think of it as just the sessions that we in one camp, maybe this camp. You have nine meals. One lunchtime go out today. You have nine meals together, correct? Correct or not? 
dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch. Nine meals or so. How many times in a year you spend nine meals with one of these brothers and sisters? It's a precious time. Amen? Take those times, sit together, chit-chat a little bit. Amen? How many times in a year you call a brother and sister, come, let's have meal. There are a few of you, I know you do that, but not this extent. That opportunity, even to take meals together, it is so precious with God's people. And you'll be surprised that in those moments, God will just click. Yesterday afternoon, we had a click moment. First time I never met Christian before. Somehow we just said, right, brother? Wow, it was just... I don't know how he did something and he, he said, well, that was yesterday's devotion for him. Because out of the whole Bible, I mentioned a this special, it's fine. It is still my brother and my sister. Care for one another. How do we love one another? How do we shape one another? Because God is there. With Amen. And so blessed, whether it was the tabernacle in the Old Testament, when they were in the wilderness, whether it was in the house of God, the temple in the courts of God, whether it was in the altar near deep longing for the presence of God, that longing. Sometimes we have been too busy, Singaporeans. We have been running too much. Sit down. Sit quiet before the Lord. Okay? An hour a day, a day, a week, a week, a year. What does it mean? An hour a day. It need not be really 60 minutes. In our old days, we all must time 60 minutes. What? Pray, pray, pray. Huh? Left 59 minutes. I pray, 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 pray. Still, huh? You know, one hour is quite long when you pray. Eh? That's the funny thing. Eh? Other things just go by. Doesn't mean you have to spend 60 minutes, but spend time with God and the Word of God. Whether it's 20 minutes and you, wow, praise God, read God's Word. Get yourself into the Word of God. Now, in various churches than I ever did in my entire life. Because as a fool, I woke up the roster so different people can preach. Ma. It's okay. But I'm too- Last time in my church, because I do it only for my church members, and I didn't want to, I want to keep my life. <laughs> and I do a few more funerals too and I'm blessed tired refired rehired re- re- retire the tire retire refire I'm so blessed I really am. Minister's Fellowship International on 24th of November just past two Thursday ago and MFI our focus is on the pastor build strong churches by building and feeding the pastor when the f- pastors are fed the people will be fat. Fat and fat or fat, lah, something like this. Isn't it true? Pastoring can be a very lonely place. We know it, pastors. And I watch just to come around. And to me, whether your church is 50 people or 500 people, it's the same. you are a senior pastor. I respect you as a servant of God, as a shepherd of the flock. If they are strong, their people will be strong. Sometimes, you know, at those positions, there are certain things you just cannot talk to everybody. I've been there as a pastor, as a senior pastor, until I step down that good to be real to talk you know me I'm just like this I hope you don't mind what you see is what you get that's all I hope so nothing more nothing less I don't have I tell you I don't have it's okay whether it was the tabernacle of God the cause of God the altar of God there was such a longing entitled this sermon longing longing for his dwelling longing Come only when you're very dry and thirsty. Come and receive it. You know, sometimes a person in hospital, you'll be surprised the doctor come for his rouse. Even the psalmist just, uh, just, just envies the birds. Hungering for this living God. This is Psalms what? Hey, test, eh? This is Psalms what? Don't know. Psalms what? For God. What, what Psalms are we at? Psalms 84. Go back, divide that by half. What? Where do you go? Psalm 84, primary 1. 42, very good, fast. Help you remember, it happened to be 84. You go back. Father, I pray that there will be a real desire within every one of us to know you, to love you, to come close to you. Amen. The psalmist talk about the birds. He talk about the deer. My life, to behold your beauty. Hide me in your pavilion. This is the Psalms heading, it says, to the son of Korah. Charles Spurgeon. Psalms 84, uh, verse 10. Read together, Ken. Ready, go. For a day, 
in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son and she... Okay, stop there. The psalmist says one day is better than a thousand. One day, you see, man. Three days. So loud and so late last night, I heard you. I thought it was two days already. One day in the house of God is better than a thousand elsewhere. You know, as a pastor, sometimes people share with me all kinds of things. Telling you this story about a friend, real, real life story is not very easy, easy, easy. Hard notes or something. Bola! Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I've been talking. Did you all hear me or not? Oh, you mean everything? Didn't hear? I get excited. I just walk around, you know. My wife said, use the mic. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, okay. Thank you. Vigilante call. And this funny thing is that this guy get weekend duty. He was so excited. All of us in national service, when we do weekend, I ah, say, nah, weekend duty. Eh? You're with me, right? Those who not the hate means do national service. Those who just look at me blankly means you. Either too young or too old. So this guy, vigilante call. Wow, he said, Wow, this Saturday I duty, you know. Why are you so happy? Saturday is to spend with your friends and outside. You are so happy. Weekend duty, again, so funny, you know, I tell you. You know why? Weekend he cannot duty. <laughs> he was so happy. Oh, Kalang Stadium, the open stadium. Oh, oh, oh. And you just stand there like that. <laughs> wow, the crowd cheering. And then that so happy. <laughs> no need to buy ticket. He loves soccer. Any match he loves soccer, he will be there. Even anybody play, he will go down tight. He's like this. This friend is just like this. He loves it so much. On Saturday and Sunday, he stand. Hey, come on, man. Your VIP stand is there. I stand. This is the field, you know. Right? He was standing there and enjoying the match. Every match, any match. No need to queue up for ticket. No need to pay for ticket. Wear his uniform, stand there and join the match. But I say, I pray one thing for you. If your team score, you don't jump, okay? You are on duty. You are supposed to do some. But you stand there and enjoy and enjoy. Saturday, Sunday duty. So happy. That is bad for him. Yeah? And quite a good way. Lah. Free ticket right in front. No one blocking you. This guy got a passion, but for soccer. I pray his passion for God will also be dead or more. Is that okay, brothers and sisters? My time is up. I'll just wrap up with this. Three blessedness, three blessed position in this psalm. Three times in verse 4. Blessed are those who dwell in the house of the Lord. They will ever be praising you. Verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pool. The third blessedness is in verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Three blessedness in these Psalms. I'll just wrap up with this. The first blessedness is about dwelling in the house of God. Very clear. I want to be in God's presence. Not only on this earth, but eternally. Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, this is important. Not only in this earth, but life everlasting in God's kingdom. First, it was a dwelling place. The second blessedness is not about a dwelling, but a journeying on pilgrimage. You see, because the people of Israel cannot be in the house of God, they are not Levites, they are not priests, they cannot go to the temple all the days, every day. But three times a year, even they are traveling, pilgrimage, even they are journeying, how many of you love Christmas, example? Yeah? So before Christmas comes, you're putting up Christmas tree. You're all excited for that. And so this second blessedness is all excited to travel to the house of God. Coming to church camp, are you excited? Were you excited? No, ah. Uh, excited or not? Thank you. So he was even excited at the very thought of Christmas is coming. I'm going to the house of God. I'm going to church camp. I'm excited. First, it's a dwelling place. Second, it's a journey to house 
house of God. And in between the house of God, it passes through the valley of Baca. Valley of Baca. Baca is weeping and tears and sorrow. He's saying that in this journey in life, before I reach my final destination, there are difficulties, trials that I go through. Tears that will flow. Anyone been there? We have, all of us have. Hard time when the tire hit the road kind of thing. That, uh, tough season that we are going through. Where are you? God kind of questions. But even in that journey, it excites him because I'm going to the house of God. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, we'll go through. Every one of us. Our focus on our destination. The first blessedness is a dwelling. The second blessedness is a journey. The third blessedness is a trusting in God. Read for me verse 12. Read for me, please, verse 12. Mm, thank you for your enthusiasm. Verse 12. Amen. Dwelling is fantastic, but even the journeying excites him. And finally, it is a trusting in God. It's knowing our God and our God knows us. But I wrap up with this. The three blessedness. Firstly, it's a place physically there. Second, blessedness is a pilgrimage where you are just encouraged because I'm making this journey. Number third, blessedness. A place, a pilgrimage, a person. It's a relationship with a God, a real living God. A place, a pilgrimage, a person. Where is the house of God? Are you there in the house of God? Do you know something else? After Jesus came, He resurrected, He ascended, He poured out His Holy Spirit, dwelling, make this a holy temple for God. To connect with Him at all times, at any time. It begins with a cultivating for the passion of God, for the longing for His dwelling. It begins with a cultivating Cultivate an admiration and an appreciation for the beauty of the presence of God. Longing for His dwelling, passion for His presence. And not just cultivating. Cultivating what? Cultivating, I said, an admiration and appreciation. A godly desire, C.S. Lewis says, a holy hunger. A holy hunger for God. There are times that people want to go and jalan jalan, go to Aeon and say, I want to spend time with God. Read his word, pray, spend time with him. It makes a difference in your life. Pardon me, you know also when a person has spent time in the present. Hear it, you can see it, you can sense it. Let, it. let that be a cultivation of our life or more of him. It begins with cultivating an admiration and appreciation for the presence of God. But that cultivation is really a godly desire. A godly desire must be, listen... A godly desire is good. How many of you want to lose weight, want to get fitter next year? It will come December 31st, all right now. February, all throw into the drain. It's real. The survey shows. Huh? Whether to lose weight, whether to grow more hair, whether to do exercise, keep fit, whatever. February, all gone, you know. You sign up, sign up for fitness thing. Huh? By March, April, go leo. Gone. A godly desire must be accompanied by godly decisions. Amen. You can say, I love God, but I'm not there. Okay, sorry, I don't want to sound judgmental. There are some people really have reasons that they cannot come. We understand that. But a godly desire must be accompanied by godly decision that will lead you to the godly destination. That wherever you are, the presence of God is there for you, with you. Isn't that a blessed place? Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just pray and we bow before you. Thank you, Lord, for time and hearts that are open to listen to you, to hear you and to know you. We thank you, Lord, for these few days. These few days, yes, Brother Ellen. These few days that we can come. Lord, I pray that this church camp will do something within every one of our lives, regardless, to every of my brothers and sisters, leaders and pastors, members, Lord, that we have a greater desire for you. Song, Brother Ellen. Lead us in a song. I, I, I've overshot the time a little bit, but 
Let's spend this time with the Lord before we have our tea break and go for our prayer. This is the air I breathe. Amen. This is the air I breathe. Yes. Your holy Amen. presence living in me. Amen. This is my your daily bread. This is my daily bread. Every words. Your very Without you, you are the air I breathe, Lord. This is the air I breathe. Holy yes. Spirit, thank you, Lord. This is the air I breathe. I'm going to invite you, brothers and sisters, those who are willing Your to make that commitment presence. and say to God that, God, I want this morning. To resubmit myself To be refreshed in you And to make a commitment to the Lord I know sometimes we make all this this commitment But sometimes we break it But let it start with that godly desire I'm inviting you Let's go wait for one another Just come forth to this place To the altar To present yourself a living sacrifice Holy and acceptable unto God And God I want more of you I mean it if there is you, please come quickly. We don't waste time. Come, 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 and we'll just pray a prayer and we'll go for your, our TV. Come, if that's where you are, come, come, come close, come close, come closer to him and say, Lord, I really want you. Is there anyone else? Come, 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 come. We don't have to walk this road all by ourselves. We have a heavenly Father. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. Come quickly, quickly, come. Oh, come, 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 come. Anyone else? I wish the whole church would come. It's a call that we must answer. They say, Lord, I need you. I want you. Oh, come. Yes, thank you, Lord. Let me ask, how many of you here have been baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues? 